We encourage you, please, to share your photographs and all of your content using our social media platforms. Our Twitter handle is at ZJ Poor Literature Festival, and the hashtag is ZJLF for tagging. Um, there is no smoking and eating in this venue. Excuse me. And please do not leave your bags unattended, and for safety reasons, can we please keep all of the aisles free and clear at all times? Now, it is my pleasure to introduce this afternoon's session of Black Swans and Intellectual Fallacies. Now, please join me in welcoming our guest, Nassim Nicholas Taleb, introduced by David McWilliams. Thanks. Okay. Sorry, one second. Today, this afternoon's session is also sponsored, so please thank the Patrika Group Series Game Changers as well. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Well, uh, Nick, when you get a sponsor, you know you've made the big time. Very few of these ones get a sponsor, so that's a clear an intent. Uh, you're all very welcome this afternoon. It's lovely to see such a big crowd for what I can guarantee you is going to be a treat for your mind. Because the fellow beside me here, he's a bit special, right? He's a little bit special. When he writes, when he thinks, when he forecasts, when he takes me aside and tells me lots of stuff I've believed in over the last couple of years is wrong, it's actually a joy to be corrected by Nicholas Taleb. His work, I'm sure most of you know, is phenomenal, not just in terms of its impact, but in terms of the breadth of knowledge, the depth of the reference points, and the extraordinary erudition with which it's all drawn together. So it's a great privilege on my own part to be up here uh, with Nicholas. And I'm going to kick off, Nicholas. The last time we met, we were in Ireland. We were discussing all sorts of stuff about the world and how it works and how it doesn't. But, you know, in the last 12 odd months, lots of things politically, financially, economically have happened that the experts okay. told us shouldn't have happened. Okay. So, Why? All right, so let me first put some background and, and also thank uh, uh, the Jaipur organizers for inviting me back. Uh, I don't know if it's the second time here. I, we were never invited back, uh, both he and yeah. I. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we have a pedigree. Of this, basically, if you don't offend people, uh, you're not doing a good job. All right? So you don't get invited, invited back. But here, we're, you, know, you invited me back to your festival, and this is so, which means that we may be invited back in the future. So let's not. Let's not Let's keep some let's reserve. Yeah, okay, right, let's think, keep some ammo yeah, in the tank. Something, okay. something. So continue the conversation. So let me uh, rephrase. My, my, my work is one book. It's not a lot of books like Black Swan Antifragile. It's one book called Inserto. And it's so far four volumes. And there's one I'm finishing. I'm trying to procrastinate because the books get better when you procrastinate. I'm trying to finish. It's called Skin in the Game. And I think it's going to be discussed today. So volume five is kind of the game. But the main theme is basically how to work, uh, uh, live in a world we don't understand. It's about uncertainty, as incerto is uncertainty in, uh, in Latin. So the, uh, the, in the black swan, which is volume uh, two of the incerto, which is the one people talk about because mostly because they haven't read it, they talk about the black swan. Uh, they, there is something uh, about a third of the book is about the expert problem. Now, what is the expert problem? It's very simple. If you, uh, it's very difficult for an incompetent plumber, okay, to operate for very long without being discovered, okay. Uh, it is very, very hard for an incompetent dentist to operate for long. Okay, that was also part of fool by randomness, but the main idea of the black swan. But you can be an incompetent economist all your life because of the structure of the system, and nobody would notice, okay? So this is... Uh, okay. No, you actually get better. You progress uh, yeah, more. You, get, you progress more. So the idea of... And, and there was a demarcation in um, the black swan, but where you have an expert problem. And the, 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 the heuristic to figure out the difference between, I call it tableau, all right, A and B, like the... Uh, uh, someone who cleans bathrooms for a living knows how to clean bathrooms. But on the other hand, someone who uh, gives corporate advice doesn't know how to, you know, we don't know if it's nonsense. And uh, uh, the, the, the heuristic is uh, uh, dual. The first one, it's easier to macro BS than micro BS. 
right? <laughs> Macro when you talk a bit vague. And the second heuristic is um, things that move versus things that are static, all right, have an expert problem. In other words, things that are dynamic versus static, okay? And, uh, and then uh, the, the associated heuristic to that heuristic is, and that was a team of the black swan, there are domains that have extreme deviations and in it, the expert gets you to not understand the system because they focus on the ordinary when these are determined by what I call the tail. Okay, so, so this is sort of to put the background to, so there's continuity in case we're invited back. You yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, the, uh, so comes the expert problem and uh, going to the expert problem about when I heard about Brexit, I realized that Brexit was largely an expert problem. But journalists didn't get it because journalism has a severe expert problem. So you, they're not going to figure out that they don't know what's going on because they don't know what's going on. So like you can't ask the mafia to monitor the activities of the mafia. You, you get the idea. So, so journalism became, and there is a severe expert problem. It doesn't mean that journalists are all bad. There's an expert problem. You can basically know nothing, like say Thomas Friedman, for example. Understand his negative. He has a negative understanding of the world. I, I was telling them complexity. not to. I was going to say, right. don't, no, no, name, I name names. don't name names. Don't name names. Okay. Yes. So, so but it's over. No, so, no, but we can say it. it's a turkey yeah. shoot. Okay. Here we go. So Brexit came from the first. So Brexit. I was in Brussels. Invited several times to Brussels, and needless to say, uh, the first time they didn't realize what's going on. They made a mistake by inviting me, and the second time they realized they made a mistake. All right. So, the basically with. People think that their criticism is about Europe, when in fact, the criticism is about a bunch of experts who want to manage the system, who don't know, as I wrote, what I call the IYI, intellectual yet idiot, they don't know, they can't find the coconut on coconut island. So we have had a series of um, complete incompetence, serial incompetence, as, as I call it, and, and basically people are fed up with that. So they can, you can bring back down the system. And in anti-fragile, I discussed, you know, with uh, something that other people have discussed in the past, something called scaling. Why is it that systems operate much better bottom-up at some scale? The scale, for example, countries that are uh, 5 million or, 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 or fewer people, uh, units, decision-making units in Singapore or Switzerland operate much better. Within Switzerland, you have a municipal system that's very powerful. So bottom-up systems operate much better. They are free of the expert problem because the errors are micro, not mac macro, and they, and they propagate up rather than coming down to the centralized system. So basically, what's, that's what people are afraid of, is that centralization uh, coming from Brussels. And, and let me explain Brussels. Uh, these guys can't guard their borders. But I tell you, by definition, these experts are not experts. They can't guard their borders, but you put bureaucrats together, they're going to have a meeting, and I don't know if you are aware of their, what they spend their time doing at taxpayers' money. If you have a farm, and the farm has a truck, or sorry, a forest or a farm, and there is a, a tractor or a truck, and it has a windshield, then you must have a wiper that it has no more than 20 rounds per minute, okay? and no less than 17, or something like that. Okay, so this is what they spend their time doing, regulating your windshield wiper when they can't guard the borders, for example. So you get the idea of why we have serial incompetence. We also have had the crises that started, I mean, I was, in, you know, right after the Black Swan, where we have central banks that basically don't understand the property of the system. And they still don't. So this is an expert problem. So came some kind of rebellion against the expert problem. Let's forget about all the rest, okay, by saying, well, so far, as an expert, you're not doing well, you know, you know fortune tellers do better, or at least they're random, okay? Here it looks like you're getting everything wrong. So allow me to manage my own affairs without having your intervention, okay? So this is sort of what we saw yeah. with the rebellion, and it's generalized, and it started actually here in India. I came two years ago in India, and this is where I started developing the idea of rebellion against what I call the pseudo-intellectual and what I call the pseudo-left, because it comes together, so yeah. the slogan-driven, all this. So this is what's going on, and it started, it started the insta spreading. Now, now, what direction it may take, who knows? How, how did it but start in yes. India? How did it start in India? What, 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 what prompted uh, what? I started reading the papers when I came to India, and I started noticing a huge amount of skepticism 
against the class of intellectuals who are looping. And, they, uh, and there I stole the impression, Salma told Sabrina, with a, that, that kind of circular uh, way of thinking. So I started noticing in the press, whereas the press in the US doesn't have the, the awareness, self-awareness of the press that we have in India. So this is how I figured out where the, there was something brewing mm -hmm. worldwide. Now, what direction it may take, I don't know. But it seems to me that we're going to approach where we're going to end up. Everything fragile breaks. We're going to end up with structures similar to Switzerland. So but that, let's, yeah. let, let, let's, let's come back to the, the crux of this, the, what you call the intellect yet idiot class or yes. individual. Yes. Why, in your opinion, have these creatures been allowed to blossom? Because, uh, okay, there's a problem of skin in the game, and that's basically something discussed in every book, fooled by randomness concerning bankers. Uh, we'll come back the to them as well. Again. We'll definitely come back to them. Uh, but skin in the game is the determining uh, factor, and, and let me explain the fact. If I am a banker, and uh, when I make mistakes, you lose the money, society loses the money, and I get a bonus, so I have the upside, and you don't pay damage for your own mistake then I'm violating a, a rule that is very ancient, but we can probably trace it uh, uh, for, for 3,750 years, Hammurabi's law. Okay, that if an architect uh, 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 bids a building and the uh, building collapses and kills the owner, the architect is put to death. And to have a perfect symmetry, if the son, firstborn son of the owner is killed, the firstborn son of the architect, they find him and put him to death. I mean, of course, they were not politically correct at the time, but this is how symmetry started, the golden rule. So symmetry means that people bear their own mistake. That's it. And you're accountable for a mistake you cause, you harm others. And it has two dimensions. The first one is what we call the agency problem. Agency problem that, agency pro for example, if I am a banker, and I can hide risk, and I call it the Bob Rubin, let me name names, Robert Rubin trade. That's okay, just got two, uh, so Friedman Ru Rubin. Uh, yeah, I'll name more. Okay, okay. don't worry. So Robert Rubin made $110 million in bonuses from Citibank over uh, 10 years. When Citibank went, went under, he didn't return his bonuses. The taxpayer foot the bill. And unfortunately, under Obama, things got a lot worse because bankers were bailed out by the taxpayer and Obama gave him, Obama has all cosmetics, by the way, he gave him the largest bonus pool in history in 2010. Okay? The largest bonus pool in history in 2010. So you can believe, so when you have the upside. So this is skin in the game. So skin in the game, so the first dimension, I call it an agency problem. If I don't pay for the cost, uh, then all I have to do is look cosmetically nice. Okay. The second one is, this, uh, is an evolutionary problem. Uh, if you're on a highway in America and you drive your car, uh, you notice that there are not that many bad drivers. Now, what's, why? It's not because people you know, uh, aren't particularly you know, good at driving. Because bad drivers are already dead. So they don't harm you because they're already dead. You see the idea? Okay. So. And, and, and you can, so sometimes you can switch the system, like for example, if uh, in India, for example, has a problem, which is they have big trucks and small little rickshaws, which means you can kill a lot of small guys. So there's no before, symmetry. Before, is there no there's symmetry, no symmetry. Right? We have more okay. symmetry in the States, and here okay. is more symmetry now. Bigger okay. cars and smaller trucks and more regulations. I'll think about that the next so, time I'm in the tuk-tuk. Okay, come yeah, here. next time you're in the thing, we'll make sure there's no we'll trucks. We'll have a couple of drinks and grab a tuk-tuk later on. See exactly. Yeah. So, so this, so the idea of symmetry, now if you go back to history of civilization, you notice that the first regulation is something along the lines of skin in the game. You eat your own dog food. You're responsible for your own cooking. Yeah. And, and even now, uh, the Romans, for example, forced the architects who built bridges to sleep under the bridge with their families. Okay, which is why when you go to France, you have the Pont du Gard, it's a structure that's stronger than anything you can find today built by humans, right? Not by nature, right? So, so this symmetry, and also it leads to a lot of moral rules. Don't do to others what you don't want them 
to do to you the negative, uh, 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 the negative uh, uh, golden rule or non-silver rule, or do, yeah. treat others the way you want them to treat you. You see, that is pretty much the foundation of civilized life. So, so let's come back because you suddenly mentioned there yeah. is, is, is if we, you, you, you mentioned Robert Rubin, so I'll mention him again. I didn't expect to have a go, but but not only did he not pay his bonus at Citibank back when they went bust, he was promoted to be the advisor to Mr. Clinton. No, no, that was after Clinton. But okay, there's another class but of people. Is, yeah, this is what I'm saying. What I'm saying is there's a class that of people. That was after Clinton, but let me, oh, to Mrs. Clinton maybe. But, but let me, okay, so there's a class of people who, uh, what I call them, the, uh, uh, benefiting from situational uh, rent, okay, and they call it rent seeking. And these people basically, uh, for example, there's some heuristics. Nobody should ever go work for the government, okay, to later get rich. You yeah. see? So the, the, anybody who becomes a civil servant should accept to never ever earn more because that's money taken from taxpayer. Okay, that's a, both a moral rule and a very good operationally uh, to prevent people, or at least for the first 10 years. So in other words, you don't go become a Jesuit priest because once you're defrocked, you know so much things that it's good to work for Goldman Sachs. You get the idea? Or you don't go become a pope, a Catholic pope, because later on, like former president, you can command $100,000 speeches in India. You get the idea? Like uh, do a, uh, do a uh, what's his name, the, your prime minister? I mean, the UK prime minister? I'm, I'm uh, Blair. Irish. Do a Tony I'm Blair. Irish. Irish is a small country okay. beside so, the UK. Yeah, but you've got, you got a lot of I these get, grand But guys. I get the, okay. the guy Blair. So, okay. The guy Blair. Yeah. So yeah. there is this. Uh, uh, so we can make a lot of rules. So my book, my next volume, Skin in the Game, again, I'm procrastinating. Uh, because I got more and more ideas, can lead to very simple heuristics about uh, risk. I, for uh, myself, never write about anything, never give you advice. I tell you what I do. So that's it. So this is, it's immoral to give people advice. If you're going to follow my advice, particularly that I have a lot of readers, okay, and maybe be harmed without my, me being harmed. So when people ask me, what do you think of the dollar, I... Um, I, uh, I, I, don't, I, I, say, I, don't, I don't tell you what I think. I tell you what I have in my portfolio. This is what I got today. All right, so if I'm harmed. So there is some kind of rule of honor to never ever give advice unless you're harmed by it. If you follow these rules, okay, particularly if the advice has risk, then you realize that, 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 that it's a code of personal honor. Go ahead. So, so what has happened to honor? Uh, it used to be, honor used to be skin in the game, like a ship owner, uh, not ship owner, a captain of the ship needs to be on a ship, except that you know the ship, the Titanic uh, guy uh, uh, fled and let people die. So we can make, that's a rule, a lot of codes of honor are linked to skin in the game. In other words, pay for your own mistakes. So, so what do you, I mean, if it's about skin in the game, how have we got to a situation where so many people with so little skin in the game are making so many decisions yeah. which are so monumental for so many million people. Okay, so let, let's go to history, all right? Uh, uh, I, I, I always look at aberration as, you know, we're not particularly more stupid than the rest uh, of uh, 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 mankind through history. So we're just as stupid as they were, so they have to have made the same mistake. And effectively, you can find a skin in the game problem um, through history, and I'm going to give two examples. Egypt collapsed. Egypt built a huge civilization, all right, a great civilization. When it became a centralized nation state with scribes, then started getting invaded by Hyksos, by everyone, by even by the, the later on the Persians, like you're putting a uh, hot knife in butter, you know? Yep. The same thing happened to the Chinese when they start having in Beijing, where if you go visit the imperial city, you can see what happens. So through cycles of history, concentration, particularly when you have scribes who are not responsible for decision making and mistakes, start stay in the system, the things collapse. And historically, anyway, you can see that throughout history that uh, people who ran countries had skin in the game because the assassination rate was monstrous. Okay. You know, uh, uh, Nero, uh, you, or either forced to commit suicide, Caligula, or assassinated. You can, you can look through history, all the bad guys really eventually. Ended up so there's a risk. 
of what we call democracy tempered by assassination. So in history. So we look at the present now. We have had a rise in the role of GDP coming from government. So for the first time in history, we have close to 10 times the ratio of government to what we had at the beginning of the uh, 20th, cent uh, uh, 20th century. So over 100 and some years, we have multiplied in the United States by five, in Europe in many places by 12, like France. So bigger government as a share of the society means more civil servants running the place and less skin in the game. And, uh, and, and that you can see in, in a lot of things, okay? You can, you can, so visibly, a system that has these properties, and this is an anti-fragile, is explained, will collapse. Because eventually, it will look stable, 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 stable. And then, like ha what happened in 2007, it will collapse. 2007 was a no-skin-in-the-game problem. People hide risk, and they know it's not their money. So eventually, and they get bonuses because they make things look good, and then things collapse. So, now, why this aberration uh, of large share of government? Okay, uh, uh, let me give my two cents. Um, it, f first, it's not really an aberration if the government is small, as the Swiss figured it out. If the government is not small at the scale of the village, if you, the government flows up. The Romans figured it. Unlike the Chinese, the Romans figured it. The Romans had anyone running any place with skin in the game. Because if you take Aleppo, Homs, all the cities that were managed by the Romans, Alexandria, what did the Romans do? They said, you manage your own affairs. I don't want to have anything to do. I want 10%, <laughs> like the mafia, less than the US government, OK, the Romans. And I want no war, yeah. OK? And then the rest. <coughs> Some provinces will run, some provinces, but you left your own affairs. So basically, they understood the notion of city-states as an ideal scale. Okay? Yeah. So uh, uh, we lost that completely. So there's no problem, it's no problem having a large government and large share of GDP coming from government that comes from the bottom. That's, that's one. Okay, so the two. Yeah, go ahead. Don't look at that, but so if we come back to the, the moment, right? come back to the political moment, okay? Come back to the United States. We have this strange relation, Americans have this strange relation because a lot of Europeans look at Trump and they think he's a vulgarian, he's this, that, and the other. But a lot of Americans, and you, you, you know Europeans, oh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't even have him inside the house, someone like that. There's a lot of Americans look at Trump and they say, I want to be him. Okay, so that's what? another thing. Um, what is that? The, uh, I think the best thing that ever happened to Trump is losing a billion dollars. The New York Times showed that the guy has deduction on a billion dollars. Effectively, Trump was bust at least once, okay? And we have evidence from my days in banking. I was for 21 years a trader, but before becoming a trader, I was in banking and my friends were lending to Trump, okay? So, and we know that he went, money he actually brought down, uh, he went bust and brought down uh, manufacturers Hanover with him, okay? So the fact that he lost a billion dollars made him real and made him look like he's skin in the game. He got poor, he got rich, he got poor, he can get rich again. So, and I think, I went and studied the phenomenon. Let's forget what the person says because, uh, you know, the, 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 you gotta look at what people do and, and, and what's the second, second order message, not the first order message. Uh, there is a, the American population, if you do a scientific study, it means sample them, see who, who, what do they want, they're not interested in the rich getting poorer. Because they, that's their hope, that's the whole American dream. And effectively, they, they just hate bureaucrats. The same with Switzerland. I don't know if you were aware that the Swiss, they don't mind that entrepreneurs be, make a billion dollars. They just want to cap the salaries of heads of corporation at some point to 23 times the minimum, okay? Because a CEO of a company is no entrepreneur, no skin in the game. He has the upside, very little downside. Okay? So the American public doesn't resent, it turned out, so does the Swiss public. They don't resent rich people. They resent rich people without skin in the game. You see? That's what they resent. And you so, think this was, this was evident in Trump's victory? It was, no, it was part of Trump's victory, but I, I, I mean, I'm not, I'm not obsessed with what's going on with no, Trump because to me, 
the president of the United States doesn't, uh, uh, it's sort of no different from Roman emperors. Roman emperors are good for history books, but on the ground, they didn't, didn't change too much. You see, they changed some for foreign policy, but not too much. Not too different from today. So, and, 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 you, and, and you can survive a bad emperor, but you can, what you cannot survive is a bad senate. You see? And, uh, the, uh, and again, uh, this, what I'm talking about now was replicated, uh, held during Roman days, because the reason the Roman emperor was popular, it was because the Romans hated the senate. The plebes always supported the emperor, and the pact was the emperor told them, okay, we'll give you games and give you bread, free bread, yep. okay, and the senate, and we'll, we're going to harm the senate, and that was okay. So pretty much, uh, what, and, and, and the consequences of Trump are, are really, you know, uh, overblown. But, so let, but let's talk about what we can learn from that. What we're learning from that is that effectively people hate the senate, that class of people who don't have any downside in life. And that's where the real inequality exists. If you take a country like France with 58% of GDP determined by government, basically you have inequality dynamically. And let me explain. In America, and I shocked them with a number earlier, uh, close to 40% of Americans will spend one year in the top 5%. More than 55% of Americans will spend one year in the top 10%. And more than 15% or 10% of Americans will spend a year in the top 1%. So that's what people want. To have that mobility upwards, you need someone at the top to go down. It doesn't work, you know. Yeah. <laughs> it means you want people to go bust. In a country like France, Okay, a civil servant who grade, reaches grade one, that's it, he's set for life. So you don't yeah. have that downward mobility, okay, in the UK, if you're a civil servant, if you're part of that class, if you go to the right schools, you're set for life. And this is what people don't like in America. And, and this is what people effectively in France may not like, but they can, you know, yeah. they're starting to and, voice it. And, people and that's the elite like. they don't like. Basically, dynamically, Inequality is punishing. Locally, when we look at inequality numbers, all right, they're not the same people who are unequal. So when people tell me, look at the billionaires, take the 500 richest uh, families or people in America in 1983, compared to 2013, you'll notice only 10% stayed on it. I'm talking families, huh? With heirs. So do you realize that we have downward mobility? <laughs> Yeah. So the American dream is not just going up, it's the guy up there next to you who can go bust. And people think it's a fair game. Like in war, you respect Hannibal because he fought war and he was exposed. We respect Julius Caesar, he was always first in battle. Okay? We respect uh, uh, Julian the Apostate because he was killed uh, 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 in a fight. You know, as, as a soldier, right? In his own army of the so, emperor. So it's, okay. it's symmetry. And responsibility. Symmetry, responsibility, and downside risk. Okay, well, let's look at another one of you know, the major thoughts, the anti-fragility. Yes. How do you, if there are black swan events, if there are these things we can't forecast, if things come and blindside us, and in everything, how do you engineer to be okay. anti-fragile, not to be fragile to these things going okay, on. Okay, so the first thing is you have to remove, uh, uh, you have to remove asymmetry, because systems become fragile when there's risk hiding coming from these asymmetries. That's the first thing, okay. and that's what happened in 2007. Uh, the notion of anti-fragile means literally that when a random event hits you, you do better than you know, some, the fragile that breaks, okay? If there's an earthquake, I'm not predicting, this glass is not gonna do very well, because it's fragile, but this will do better, it's a little more robust, okay? But it's not as durable, okay? So this is how we classify things. Now, when you ask, and, and, and that's a big question, uh, the skin in the game is basically an asymmetry, where if there's a random event that hits me, you lose the money. And if there's no random event, I make the money. That's yeah. pretty much the idea of uh, sk how skill in the game can disrupt that asymmetry. Yeah. Okay. So the, uh, 
idea of a system, a good system, a bottom-up system, can handle a lot of shocks, serially, because you don't have what we call monoculture. The, the, the monoculture, you know about yeah, monoculture. monoculture, the yeah. Irish had, uh, just to tell you how no, much, no. how economics is nonsense, Ricardo talks about specialization, and Ireland had monoculture into potatoes, all right, okay, and sure enough, uh, because they were not diversified enough into potatoes, they were hit, and that's what happened. They were slightly so fragile. They were very, very fragile. And, and, and quite uh, two million Irish. They've learned Irish. to become really robust since then, though. Uh, okay, still. <laughs> All right. So, the, uh, so a good system, the whole idea is to have a system that can handle the exception yeah. without being compromised by it terminally. And that system is a system that embraces shots all the time. But that's, so, so that's a system that exposes itself to and embraces risk. That risk is the key thing to expose yourself to and deal with it. Exactly. And if, you, it. if you don't have any risk, okay, then you're not going to learn from uh, complex systems. Don't learn from a guy in Brussels telling him what to do. Complex systems learn just like your body, all right, by trial and error. Okay, and you, information you get from, uh, from nature is with trial and error. If I bang on a table, if I bang too much here, okay, I'll come back next year doing it, okay, my, my bone will be stronger. And my bone doesn't get stronger because, I, you know, my brain tells it to get stronger, but because of the, the way you respond to stressors is by overcompensation. And that overcompensation effect needs to be present for the system to be long-term durable. If you don't have that, the system will not survive. So, so what about, for example, on a very personal level, you know, I'm not sure if it's the case in India or it was the case in the Lebanon, but certainly Irish mammies always want their little boys to get a good job in a bank or go and work in the civil service or go and become a doctor or do these, all these jobs have one characteristic, Nick, and that's no risk. So societies have become... Actually, no, so there, there is a, if you're a doctor, you're, you, 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 you are exposed to risk, and particularly in America since Ralph Nader. And actually, I'm, uh, uh, the dedication of the book is to Ralph Nader, who really put skin of the game back into people via tort laws in America. I, mean, I don't like regulators. I like laws. I like the legal system to take care of things. Okay? So the uh, a doctor will have skin in the game malpractice is so heavily punished that effectively you have the reverse. You, you, you can save 50 lives, you make a mistake, you're gone. and you're gone. Whereas normally the symmetry would be you, say you can save 50 lives, it allows you to kill 50 people, you see. So that, but it doesn't work that way. So effectively there are professions where there is a monster who gets away with it is pharma. Because pharma can kill you slowly with, with uh, these medications that have hidden side effects, like Robert Rubin. They make the money, and then you <laughs> die from them, nobody's going to figure out. You see, that's, that's yeah, yeah. where, but not doctors. So anyway, so I'm interrupting, but, but, but go but ahead. My, yeah. my point is that so much of the advice that's given out to people in general is to avoid risk, to make yourself actually fragile, when you think you're I, making I don't know. I mean, maybe, maybe, maybe uh, Spartan mothers had a different approach. Spartan mothers, I think. Is that you have to have honor. So the minute you lose a notion of honor, and if we can put back in the system, and actually it's coming back very quickly. I noticed one thing about the robustness of ancient values, is that whenever I bring something from Greco-Roman values, I mean, I'm not familiar with India, but, I, you know, so this is why Greco-Roman values, people immediately embrace them. If I tell them, it's not honorable to do that, people feel bad and rapidly tell their friends it's not honorable to do that and people start avoiding some, some things. Um, it, it, if you put back sense of honor, like for example, if you're a journalist, there is a sense of honor. The honor is not to follow other journalists because you're afraid of being ostracized if you don't ta follow these tags of the pseudo left. No. If you're a journalist, you're only as good as the risk you take because newspapers were supposed to be here to take risk exposing, you know, power, yeah. not, you know, playing the system. Now, another thing you we've talked quite a bit about privates, fascinating, is this minority rule. Yes. 
and with respect, well, we've talked about with respect to religions and ethnic groups, but can you explain what the minority rule is in terms of society and why it's important? Okay, yes. There is a naive uh, interpretation um, around the world that say uh, that uh, you need the majority to change something. And, uh, and effectively, uh, things don't work that way. Even ethics, everything. You need a small minority with skin in the game, typically, to change the system. And let me explain. Uh, if you... Uh, I, I discovered it uh, the, the one day. There was a bunch of Orthodox Jews visiting, uh, you know, uh, an institute where I was, you know, uh, helping out with a party. And uh, it was in Boston. And I told them, oh, I'm so sorry. Let me make sure we have kosher uh, stuff. They said, well, all lemonade uh, is kosher in America. And actually, all iced tea is kosher in America. All sodas are kosher, at least in the East Coast. What? I, I, look, I googled 0.3% of the population is kosher. 100% of the lemonade is kosher. And it has a label out of the bottom. I said, Why? Because very simple. You can drink kosher lemonade without complaining. They cannot drink kosher lemonade. So you have that asymmetry. Same asymmetry that you see with skin in the game. So for, so, for example, now I was at Christmas in a family dinner in America. We had lamb. I opened the packet. It said halal. How many Muslims are there in America? Less than 1.5%? Halal meat? For when you go to the Why? Because it's so expensive to merchandise, halal, non-halal. So you, you, you tell, it, it's, it, it's, those who need to know will know, you see? So this is a minority rule. It, if, if you get, you know, absolutely, uh, now almost no school district in America that allows peanuts. And, 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 and it's like, because if you have a peanut allergy, you cannot have peanut, but you not peanuts. So if you generalize, it looks like all these binary rules seem to come from Minorities who don't want, you know, what I call the intolerant minority. If I only eat kosher, I'm only going to eat kosher. So you can generalize it to other things, to behavior. If I'm a thief, I don't mind having non stolen merchandise. But if you're an uh, uh, intolerant minority, you want to have only non stolen merchandise. So you put these rules in society and you see how basically some minority, what I call the a symmetric minority dominates in so many things. Okay, and, and so what's go ahead. the implication of this for a continent like Europe? Well, a country like Europe, well, within Islam, let's talk about Islam. This is a thing people talk about. Within Islam, you have Shiite Islam, and then you have Sunni Islam. All right. Within Sunni Islam, people—it's uh, a misnomer to call Islamists. You have small groups. So basically, the problem is that if you put one Salafi with ten people. The ten have to act like a Salafi. That's the minority rule, which is, you know, which tells us what to, the Salafi means the extreme Wahhabi strain. That is, that's a problem, you know, within Islam. And, and does this come from? Does this comprehension of or sensitivity to this not just come from drinking lemonade in America, but from the fact that you were born in Lebanon? I was, yeah, I'm Greek Orthodox from Lebanon, but I was born in a in a. I mean, in, in a society that was Christian at a time, but was exposure to Islam because it's around us, and we don't we, we study the language, the religion, everything. And then I noticed one thing: that Tripoli, Lebanon, for example, you can recognize Christian women when I was a kid at the fact that they had the Russian babushka type thing to cover them, but Muslim women no. And then Salafis came in small amounts, and then now. Everybody's acting like a Salafi, and nobody eats uh, pork, nobody drinks. So that, so you can see how a small minority can change an environment. So there's nothing wrong with accepting, you know, or the point is you need to know, understand that the intuition of, of that mechanism is present in some population who may want some rule. Like, for example, if, you, uh, if I bring a Hindi to America, it's not going to change dietary laws. You see? But if you bring uh, Salafis, it changes dietary laws and change other things. So, there's, so there are some, uh, some uh, 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 implication uh, to these, uh, you know. And if you uh, 
to come back to this, this idea, the implications are that small minorities can profoundly affect the behavior and lifestyle. Some, some, some. not all. Some, not all. Like, for example, you have to figure out which ones, okay, uh, and, and monitor that. Basically, if someone has an asymmetry, a severe asymmetry, you got a problem. Okay, so you have to monitor which ones have that asymmetry present. Can we flip right back to when I first read you? It, I thought I was reading finance anyway, but now I know I was reading something totally different. I see. But I thought, I thought, uh, can we go back to banking, finance, the international money markets, the way the financial world works or doesn't yeah. work? Is your worldview one that we just have got a series of crises which are guaranteed to happen because of asymmetry? Exactly. And it will just happen again and again. I mean, I wrote that? about it in the Black Swan. I said there's so much hidden risk in the system because of this asymmetry. And sure, it happened a few, right after. That was 10 years ago that I published the Black Swan. It happened six months later exactly. My publisher wanted a crisis to illustrate the book, and he got the crisis. Maybe he's religious, he prays, and he got the crisis. All right. <laughs> anyway, so, the, 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 so but, but nothing has changed things. Uh, people are still... People understand the problem. Hasn't, it's only now that things are changing. Because to me, the crisis is coming much more from that class of what I call the rent-seeking, risk-hiding, no-skin-in-the-game person who thinks you know, that they're entitled to change your life without paying for the cost of that. Oh, uh, someone I debated incidentally, but illustrate perfectly that class is Larry Summers. All right. So, and effectively, they think they have high IQ because other people like them decided on a definition of IQ that is so circular that it has to include them. All right. But they can't find a coconut on Coconut Island. All right. And and both him, Joseph Stiglitz, they thought that Venezuela was great. No, Stiglitz. And and okay, he I've and got, Stiglitz got thought names. that Fannie okay. Mae was was safe. For example. So we have a name of people, uh, Paul Krugman, if you want. Six, by the way. Six, all right. Yeah. Paul Krugman. So here we're talking about a class of people who think they are intelligent, but they're not very intelligent. That's the point, all right? And uh, so, and 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 they determine it. So they cause more crises than they uh, 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 solve. Meanwhile, the hero is the artisan who delivers, who bears the fruits of his labor, pay the costs. Okay, they're never bailed out because bankers get bailed out because they have lobbyists in Washington. But hairdressers are not bailed out, and, and that's that's uh, the and they bear the, the the cost of other people. So we won't be invited to Davos, the pair of us, though. I was invited once to Davos, and needless to say, I made sure that they'll never want to see ever or hear my name back ever. All right. <laughs> so and, and it worked, all right, visibly. No, I called it actually uh, later on the association. They actually they made a mistake of inviting me again for something. And then I, uh, I, I made sure they know, I call it the International Association of Name Droppers, A-I-A-N-D, <laughs> you know, the, the, so on. But, uh, but, the, the, but they also, they, they really generally think that it's their mission to fix a problem, they understand nothing. So basically, if Larry Summers were a surgeon, he's a person who would perform brain surgery on you because you have a headache, all right? So, and, and think that he understands the system. And yet, the, the very terrifying point is that this class propagates itself, amplifies and boosts itself, and is inserting itself so deeply into the mechanisms of state, it's hard to see it usurp. No, no, but, but let, me t let me tell you what they do. They do what happened is that they use language in a, in a, in a way that a mathematician, given that my work is mathematical, my real job is uh, now uh, is doing uh, uh, applied math. That, that's my real job. Uh, so, but, so you define things properly. What happened is that they start use words, buzzwords. You know that uh, this and this and uh, you know they use buzzwords, and and by using these words they completely destroy them. As, like for example, if someone is opposed to them, it's populist. All right. But if you vote according to what they think 
you, you know, how you should be voting, it is, no, it's democracy, all right? It's, it's compatible with democracy or the other one is populism. So that, these kind of words they create, they, they've damaged these words, basically, by, by using them. So that class of people, can, I mean, basically, as they say, you can fool some people some of the time, uh, some people all the time, all the people some of the time, but you can't fool all the people all the time. Okay, eventually the thing is going to collapse. Okay, on that uh, jolly note that eventually things are going to collapse, I'm going to go to the floor. I am sure there are many, many questions for Nicholas. Put your hand up. I'll see you all. We'll just go. This gentleman, second row, hand up there. You should favor, you should, you should be gender. Oh, we have to yeah, be gender balanced and favor bald people over okay. people's hair. All right. <laughs> and red-haired people, if there's anyone out there, go for it. Okay, so you've told us at last a list of six names of who are not the experts. Maybe there are one or two. Are there any experts you think know anything? Well, the system is the best expert. And that's the whole idea. Is that there's a, well, there's Actually, I wrote a piece called an expert called Lindy. <laughs> Lindy is time. If you follow the system and let, uh, that's basically the high X method. Is that Hayek wrote something on, on the pseudo expert already 50 years ago, 60 years ago, and, and, and he said the pretense of knowledge, the system, the market understand better than central planners. You agree? It's the same thing with so accepting that human body knows more than doctors, okay, or some doctors. This is what we call. So the real expert needs not to be some hero making proclamation. You see, but there are a lot of people are compatible with an expert problem. Uh, a lot of uh, uh, individuals understand that. But the whole idea, to me, the expert, as I told you, is a dentist. The expert is a plumber. The expert is the guy who drove me here. Right? He knows how to find the place. If you put an economist, equivalently, he would take you somewhere and find a story. All right? <laughs> it's like, so assume we're, yeah, we're assume, going yeah, to exactly, do right? yeah. so. Okay, uh, somebody else got the mic. Yeah, go for it. Gentleman there, yeah. And then I'm sorry, not yet bald, but uh, my question is about Ireland. Uh, if you see the first level impact on Ireland, yes, the potato blight killed a lot of people. But if you look at the second order, a lot of them went to America, took over the East Coast. And if you go there on St. Patrick's Day on New York or Chicago, you'll see a lot of them. Some of them have even taken over the Jaipur Lit Fest. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. No, no, they those, those who survive. <laughs> so, <laughs> Is there's, it, there's lots more behind me as well. Is it that uh, fragility is not so bad because it pushes you out and a small okay. island like Ireland has done much more in okay. the world than if it didn't have the potato blight? I, I, first of all, no, it's actually a fallacy that, 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 that the, the, because the potato blight really killed or uh, displaced 2 million uh, Irish and the population today is 5 million. But, uh, but let me answer that fragility is a good thing. As I said, it's a necessary thing for a system provided not, not everything breaks at once. So the restaurant business is the best business on the planet Earth because restaurants go bankrupt locally and one at a time, but you don't have a generalized banking, uh, uh, sorry, a restaurant crisis like you have a generalized banking crisis. This is what we mean by fragility. Fra uh, uh, fragility without monoculture. So you have some, every day you'd have bankruptcies, but not a generalized one. And this is why the, 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 the in fact, for, at your individual level, it's good to have small problems every day, but not a terminal irreversible one. Okay? That's the idea. And oh. what happened in Ireland was one inch from being irreversible. We can come back to that, you know. Don't worry about but worry with the Irish, the Irish. We're like cockroaches. We, only, we never come in just one. So we'll see one of us as loads of us around. Now, who's got the next gentleman there? Yeah. Uh, I have a question about arguably the biggest game changer of this millennium. That was 9-11. Exchange foreign policy around the world. Yeah. It launched several wars. Yeah. And mainstream media is pretty united on the official version of 9-11. Yet, okay. yet more than 3,000 experts, engineers, architects, U.S. military people at the highest levels do not believe the official account. And I'm curious if you have addressed this issue in your upcoming no, book? I, I, I don't, no, I mean, I don't, I'm not a journalist. I deal with, with uh, uh, but let me tell you one thing about 9-11. It's normal to have people, uh, uh, skept we should encourage people to be skeptic, all right? But uh, I, I think the evidence isn't that overwhelming. But one word I would say about 9-11, it illustrates an IYI. 
9-11 came, it was a result of U.S. interventionism, training Al-Qaeda people in Afghanistan, and, and, and launching a monster like ISIS later, and not learning about unintended consequences. And they are, they are policies, and in Skin in the Game, but also in Anti-Fragile, describe exactly what a foreign policy should be that doesn't have unintended consequences. It's a very low interventionism, and only when there are uh, humanitarian problems. So 9-11 is a result of American interventionism, which led to worse, you see, the, the Iraq invasion, and the State Department, for example, let me take name names, State Department, pretty much these guys have a uh, 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 IYI problem, because they don't realize that everything they've done caused catastrophes, all right? But at the same time, they think they're gonna get it right next time. Yeah, well, that's, there's, there's, no, there's, there's very little doubt. There's a gentleman with the mic there, and I'm going to come down right to the front row next. Hello, sir. Um, sir, my question is, do you have any insights into the recent demonetization of Indian currency? This is, okay, let me tell you, I am not, never going to talk about this unless I have skin in the game. I got none, I'm not going to comment, <laughs> right? Okay, I have my own ideas, but I'm not going to comment, just out of honor. But if I settled in India, I'd definitely... If you invite me to come back, enough that it would have an impact on me, I will comment. <laughs> There's a lady here with the mic, yeah. Hi, uh, I think the previous answer sort of demonstrates what I wanted to ask about. Uh, with your body of work, a lot of people would see you as an expert on, say, something like an expert problem. Uh, do you worry about uh, that happening to you as well? And what do you do to guard against that? Well, there is something that is called, I mean, uh, actually, the the the... the you cannot, the, the skeptic is not an expert, it's an anti-expert. If you debunk a falsehood, uh, it is, there's no expert problem. The expert problem is that the charlatan always gives you positive solution what will help you when it can't. Someone who tells you, well, this doesn't work and this is the evidence, you see, the expertise doesn't cause an expert problem. But I hope to be limited to that, not to start pontificating on Indian currency policy, or uh, <laughs> you get the idea. Are the Irish, I'm, I'm a risk are the Irish famine and stuff? I, you I'm, really a, I'm a risk. Right? I'm a, no, no. I'm a, a risk business, and a risk business is not something that 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 you, you can dispense with. You see. Who has the next question? I think this gentleman there with the mic standing. Yeah. Hello. So I have two questions for you. Recently, I read your article about semi-intellectual uh, experts. Yeah. You call them IYI, intelligent set period. So my question uh, is, uh, do you see the same class emerging in India? And uh, the second question... Let me tell you, let me tell you why I, I like India. Uh, I, there is a book by a fellow who's here, Hardeep Singh. Read it on foreign policy. Someone asked me, okay, and you read a book by Hardeep Singh, on interventionism, and you realize that there is a two-way uh, order flow, so what I would say, in thinking in India that has ceased to exist in the West. The West has, just like we have the Irish potato famine, we have monoculture, monoculture, and, and labels, like uh, the helping Saudi Arabia uh, bomb the hell out of Yemen is perfectly on the left, okay? But, and you can bomb Mosul, they're not, you know, harm to the population is blessed. So Obama dumping 26,000 shells is absolutely nothing wrong with that, all right? So you get the idea. So you have monoculture in the states. In India, from what I see, people are aware of some kind of long tradition of time, and that really time is the expert, and if you depart from time, from the rule of time, uh, the burden of the proof is on you. You see, so there is that kind. Of, I've seen that consciousness because the only book I've seen on foreign policy that made sense to me was written by an Indian. All right, the, the, to, and and the, the, sometimes the newspaper articles. So I realize that that effectively the system may not be good, but it's definitely healthier than the one we have in Europe and the United States. Did you have a second part to your question? I suspect you did. Uh, lower the level of public discourse uh, because uh, uh, not everybody reads the black swan 
and not everybody okay. who reads the black swan understands the okay, okay. Let, let me explain okay. what the social media did that's good thank you very much for that all right let, let me let me answer about social media very quickly uh, in a naturalistic environment you can't hide anything from anyone so in a naturalistic environment in a village people communicate between the, 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 the between 1940s say the 40s and 2000 the world was owned by that elite because people would go home it's not a two-way conversation with the TV and you read the New York Times that's another aberration all right you read the New York Times so I have a one-way order flow social media is more naturalistic you go to the marketplace you talk to people you see so social media is a two-way order flow all right not a one-way order flow and that replicates what we had until you know the TV came all right and so social media has been very healthy in debunking experts and in creating people like me. I don't use newspapers. The Financial Times wrote to me. They said, can you write something? I, I tell them why. You're going to edit it. You're going to remove. I can curse on Twitter. Nobody can stop me. All right? And I got, you know, more readers than you. So explain to me what, uh, you know, why do I need the Financial Times? You get the idea? So, so it's the same thing, uh, you know, uh, the social media has allowed voices that are not part of that monoculture because I'm a not journalist, all right? I have independence in the sense that my financial situation doesn't depend on someone judging me, all right? So uh, when a journalist has that, they can become prone to power, to lobbying, to power, to things like that. So social media has been a total liberation. Ha has been, uh, you know, allowing me to spread my message. Who has the mic? Go for it. So, uh, this brings us to the question of privilege. So, you were talking about the skin in the game part. So, privilege insulates you against it because just if you are born to a particular class, uh, you are like, you know, insulated from the skin in the game part. For example, uh, I wanted to think it this way, like in France, like they had a three estate system. A class was like, you know, insulated against skin in the game. The same, like a similar stuff, similar system exists in India too. Like, a class or like a group of class, uh, people are like, uh, I'm sorry, I'll make it clear. A, a few classes are privileged, so in, but the privilege uh, pans out in different ways in different countries. For example, in France. I see, yeah, so what was okay. the point? So the point is like in France, uh, it lead, uh, led to a uh, revolution where like, you know, they, uh, they toppled the order, but in India it's, uh, you okay. know, went on for uh, around 2,000 years. So will you take it as a contradiction? Don't yeah, India actually, a, uh, actually, India is a big mystery for me. Because I don't quite understand the role of the Brahmins and stuff like that because I was telling them the only two societies I could find that maintained for a long time a class of non-warriors because a warrior can die. Uh, running the place was India and his country, Ireland, when they had the Druids. The Druids were on top of the hierarchy whereas typically in the Mediterranean world the hierarchy, on top of the hierarchy, is the warrior. It's because we're very sophisticated. See? So someone who could die. So, <laughs> maybe, maybe, but the, uh, so this is one, I, but I don't know, sometimes you've got to read between the lines to know if it's true or if it's cosmetic. Yeah. yeah. So, so I, I, I tell you, I don't understand India very well. I understand Ireland a little better. But, mm -hmm. We have the uh, They're kicking us out of here. Yeah, with the opportunity, I think, for one last, or are we and gone? One. We're, go uh, we're gone, we're gone, we're gone, we're gone. But was I it, brought my pen for signing. There's a young man here, can I just say, who's his hand Yeah, he's a young man, yeah, young man, young man. Young man, man there on the very first row, he's hand up for ages. Yeah, yeah. Go for it. Hello. Yeah, so my question is, uh, first of all, is classical liberalism anti-fragile in your view, uh, in your opinion? And second, how do you distinguish uh, Lindy effect with survivorship, uh, okay, survivorship bias. Okay, okay, the first question I can answer. The second one, it's better to do it by email because, uh, all right, uh, it's too technical. The first <laughs> one, we're talking about classical liberal, uh, liberalism. Classical liberal means uh, Adam Smith type liberalism. Uh, that has skin in the game and it built in. The whole system is based on skin in the game. On the other hand, crony capitalism, a la Tony Blair, Bill Clinton, uh, and post Bill Clinton. That, that, that's not, uh, and, and, and uh, Bush and Obama, all right? It's crony capitalism. That's not skin in the game. But classic liberalism, the way it was understood by Adam Smith works. What we have now is socialism, 
all right, for the losses, capitalism for the winners. And we've had that practically since, I think, Bill Clinton. On that note, Thanks. ladies and gentlemen, Thank Nicholas Tarab. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much indeed. Thanks. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Nicholas will be signing his books over at the oh, book signing tent just over here. Thank so if you'd like to have a conversation, please head that way. Uh, we wish to thank, oh, thank our sponsors of this session, Patrika Group.